Hey guys, today's legal tip is multi-buyer disclosure form. So how many of y'all know that we even have this requirement? This is under 40-57350F. And the law basically says that when you represent two clients that are interested in the same property, you have to disclose to both of those clients that you have another client interested in the property and you are not allowed to discuss any information about that other client with them. So the situation would be, I represent you, I represent another person. Both of you have looked at a property, let's say in Spring Valley, you both say, hey, I'm interested in making an offer on this property. I now have to put into writing to both of you that, hey, I represent another client that who is interested in that exact property and anything I understand or know about them that would be of any benefit to you in making your offer, negotiating your price, I may not disclose that. Same goes for them to you. And so what cannot be disclosed? Well, basically anything. You can't disclose their race, their religion, their national origin, their color, whether they have a family. Do they already live in the neighborhood? Um, what level of interest do they have? Are they in the military and maybe moving in from out of town? Are they from out of town? How many houses have they looked at? How long have they been looking? How interested are they moving? Are they really, really wanting to move or is this just something they're kicking uh, tires for? Basically, anything you tell them, you cannot, uh, you can't disclose to them anything that would be a benefit. And if you think about this for a minute, if I am looking to make the offer and I find out that the person um, who's competing against me already lives in the neighborhood, has a house, it's not even on the market yet, then maybe what I'm thinking is I don't have to go as high because maybe this person's really not that serious. They haven't even listed their house yet. But if the person is moving in, let's say they're PCSing in from Fort Stewart and they've already had three contracts fall through that they didn't want the winning bidder on um, and they're moving here to Fort Jackson in a week and they're desperate, now I know I'm probably going to have to go a little bit higher because this family here is probably going to go with a real strong offer. So anything can be uh, of issue. I, I think it starts getting to be a problem. And this is the statute doesn't really address this, but this is a really a problem is now how do you help them negotiate the price? Because what happens is both buyers are going to say, what should I offer? I mean, you're going to have to say, I can't tell you, I, I can't suggest that you need to, to take all the factors in and you need to let me know what you want to offer which is kind of not the service your client's wanting, but you can't tell one client, yeah, I think you should offer 300 grand. And then the next client asks you, well, what should I offer? What are you going to say? 300 grand or 305 or 295? Because whatever you tell that second client, obviously is going to affect their ability as whether their offer is accepted. So it's a very harsh rule. It's a very strong rule, but it's a necessary rule to keep these shenanigans from happening. So it might rise to a situation where you say, look, I've already helped my first client submitted an offer on it. I know what the offer is. So I'm going to have my broker come in or I'm going to have one of my other agents come in that I, that doesn't know the situation and they'll help you come up with the best price to offer because I already have information that would be detrimental to either you or the other client. So that's a tough situation for everybody, but again, it is necessary. I, th I think I've done legal tips on this a couple of times in the past, but it always bears to be repeated because I know right now with multiple offers and desperate buyers, you know, you don't want to find yourself in a situation. All right. I hope everybody has a wonderful Memorial weekend. And I hope everybody remembers why we're celebrating or remembering. I'm not sure that Memorial Day really is a celebration. It's more of a remembrance of all of those who served before us. Uh, we are the greatest country in the world. And the men and women that serve our military are really heroes. That's the true heroes, not these idiots that are on television. So I hope everybody remembers that this weekend. And don't forget, when you have a three-day weekend, it's a great time to catch up on some of our old podcasts. Our podcast can be found on BlairCato.com. Just click the podcast button at the top and all 30 of the episodes are there. So I'm sure there's one that you may have missed that you go catch back up on. All right. Have a great weekend.